In order for our cranfish to remain healthy and live properly, we need to keep certain water parameters stable and in check, such as your pH, GH and KH. You may or may have not heard about these things, but that's okay as I will be explaining what they are and how they are important in your aquarium. Hey guys, welcome back to the world of grams. In today's video, will be a beginner's guide explaining these water parameters. These are important to understand, as different types of aquarium fish will be more suitable to your tank's water parameters based on where they originated from naturally. In nature, Different waterways will have differences in these parameters, and as such, the animals living there will have evolved and adapted to these conditions. Having the wrong conditions will definitely affect the animals, meaning they will be stressed or could potentially die. Anyway, beginning with pH, pH measures how acidic or how basic a solution is, such as your aquarium water. This is measured on a scale between 0 and 14, where 7 is neutral and anything under is acidic, while everything above is basic. For example, pure water will be considered neutral with a pH of 7, while lemon juice is acidic with a pH of 2, and soap is basic with a pH of 10. However, the pH of your aquarium water will be in a much more narrow range of around pH 6 to pH 8.5. But this is still a huge difference as the pH scale is a logarithmic scale, meaning that each pH change by 1 will be equivalent to it being 10 times more acidic or basic. For example, from pH 8 to pH 7, your aquarium water will be 10 times more acidic, and moving from pH 8 to 6 it will be 100 times more acidic. So with this in mind, it is extremely important to keep your pH of your aquarium stable and not fluctuate around constantly as it will stress out your fish a lot. Also, as mentioned earlier, different types of fish will prefer different water parameters such as pH. So you should research on the recommended pH range of the fish you want before buying it. There are many ways to adjust your pH while keeping it stable at that level and I will show you how later in the video after explaining the other two parameters. Our next parameter is GH and this stands for general hardness. This measures the amount of calcium and magnesium in your aquarium water and if you have a lot, your aquarium will be considered hard and if only a small amount, your water will be considered soft. Like pH, Different types of fish will prefer different conditions and having the correct ones will definitely improve their health and colour. But at the same time, fish can easily adapt to different conditions, so unless your conditions are extremely different, it will be fine in most cases. Here is a chart of what different amounts of GH will be considered as, and you can easily test for your cram GH by using a GH test kit. Like pH, there are things which in just levels of GH, and I'll explain how after our last parameter. Our last parameter is KH, which is known as carbonate hardness. Essentially, this is the buffering capacity of your water to resist pH fluctuations from acids. Buffers for pH occurs everywhere in nature, such as in soil, waterways, and even in our bodies. High levels of KH will allow your aquarium water to remain stable at higher pH levels, which is needed for some fish like African cichlids. If your pH level is high but KH is low, you will find that your pH will be constantly falling even if you keep adding chemicals to increase pH, because there isn't enough buffering capacity to support it. However, for some tanks, you may want to have a low KH and this is because you want to have a lower pH value for some types of fish. Ultimately, KH will always have some relation to pH, as changes in KH will, all, will always cause changes in pH. So now that you guys have an understanding on each parameter and their effects, I'll go through some ways to adjust these, as you may need to do this depending on the type of fish you want to keep. To naturally lower your pH and KH, you can add things like peat, 
Indian almond leaves or driftwood. Using RODI water or specialised substrates like plant and shrimp soil will also do this and lower your GH additionally. You can also use chemicals like powdered acidic buffers to decrease your pH and KH. To naturally increase your parameters, adding limestone rocks like cerium stones and Texas holy rock or substrates like coral chips and coral sand will increase your pH, KH and also GH. Chemicals such as baking soda or specialised buffers will also increase these parameters to better suit fish that prefer alkaline waters. With this being said, this concludes our beginner's guide to understanding water chemistry concerning pH, GH and KH. It is definitely important to pay attention to these parameters by doing water tests to keep your fish or aquatic animals in the most optimum condition possible. I will be making a more advanced video on this topic, targeting more on the chemistry side of things, which I will put a link in the description below when I have made it. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it very helpful, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.